Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to show you what to do with your Google Authenticator when you've completely lost your phone and you have no backup. So let's get started. All right, so I've done a couple of Google Authenticator videos uh, where you're transferring your Google Authenticator over to a new phone in the case that you have your old phone. And I've also done one on how to restore codes that you may have backed up. So, of course, I get a lot of questions about, hey, what if I've completely lost my phone and I have no backup? What do I do? So I figured I'd go ahead and jump right into this one. So let's get started. I'll do a couple of cryptocurrency exchanges. And, of course, I'll do uh, the Google uh, account in itself. So let's dive in and uh, get started. All right, so I'm going to start with the easy case. So the easy case uh, for a Google account would be that you've lost your phone, you had Google Authenticator installed on that phone, for, and we're protecting your Gmail account with it, but you regularly log into your Gmail account on your computer. So it's a trusted device. So the e this is the easiest scenario of all. So we're in our Gmail here. We're just going to go over to Settings, uh, which is this gear icon up here. We'll go uh, pull that down and go to settings again. All right, we want to go to accounts and import, uh, change account settings, and we're going to go to other Google account settings. All right, and then we want to go to security, which is over here on the side. And then we go over to two-step verification. So we'll just click there. And it's going to want you to log into your account. So I happen to have a password manager. I'm assuming you all know the password for your Gmail account. All right. If you don't, you'll have to reset it, which might be a trick if you've lost your phone. All right. I don't want the tap. I'm just going to use the traditional. So I'm not going to add that. I'm just going to skip that. All right. We can get into that at a, a different time. All right. And here we are on the page where we can control the settings for our Google Authenticator app. All right. So... I was able to log into this account because I'm on a computer that I generally check my Gmail on and it's already uh, a trusted device, right? So I'll just log into my Gmail account on my computer, get to these settings, and I'm going to hit change phone. All right, and then I just tell it what type of phone I have. I'll hit next. And there's that code, okay? So uh, now I'm going to get my new phone. I'm assuming that you've got a new phone, <laughs> right? We're, we all, we're going to have to get a new phone, and we've downloaded and installed the Google Authenticator. So you can see my Google Authenticator is down there at the bottom. I'm just going to open it up, and here we are. This is a fresh copy of Google Authenticator, right? So I'll hit Begin Setup. And it pops up down there at the bottom. So I'm going to do a scan barcode. Uh, give access to the camera. And I'm just going to pick that up and scan that barcode. And there you go. I've got that first Google Authenticator code. Now I'm going to hit Next on my computer screen. And I'm going to enter that code. And then I'm going to hit Verify. I'm done. Boom. So that was the easy case, all right? <laughs> all right, and now let's try Microsoft. You may have uh, got Google Authenticator on your Microsoft account, so let's check that out. I'm gonna hit sign in here. All right, and now I wanna go over here to security. All right, so now it's asking me to enter the code from my Authenticator. So that's from the phone that I lost. So what am I going to do? All right, so down here it says sign in another way. So I'm just going to click that. Uh, and Microsoft is pretty generous here, right? So uh, if I don't have my uh, Google Authenticator anymore, it's going to allow me to get a code from uh, one of these other secondary type devices, which aren't quite as secure. Makes it easy to recover your code. So I'm going to use text, right? And it wants me to verify my phone number. All right, and then I'll hit send code. All right, and so you heard that code come in on my phone. They uh, just they uh, texted me a code that I'll use temporarily 
to get into the account. I'm going to hit verify. All right, so identity verification apps. See, uh, Microsoft has its own two-factor authentication. You want to use uh, identity verification apps. All right, so I'm going to choose turn off all existing apps and hit remove there. All right, and now I've disabled it completely. So now all I want to do is add, uh, I want to re-enable it using my new phone. All right, so we'll hit set up identity verification app. And I don't want the Microsoft one. I'm going to hit set up a different authentication app, which is my Google Authenticator. Now we're going to uh, enable this on the new phone. I'm going to hit the plus. I'm going to hit scan barcode. I'm going to lift it up there. And now I've got my Microsoft code enabled uh, on the new phone, right? And in order to confirm that, I need to enter that new code. Uh, you'll notice there that these codes regenerate every 10 or 15 seconds. Right? That's just the way Google Authenticator works. Uh, so we'll enter the code here, 620555. We'll hit Next. And there. We have successfully enabled uh, Google Authenticator on our Microsoft account on the new phone, right? So that's all we really needed to do. So the crux of the biscuit here was that Microsoft had some backup methods of identification, uh, namely uh, our recovery emails and our text. So it wasn't too hard to uh, enable two-factor authentication again on our new phone using Microsoft. Pretty simple. All right, so those were kind of easy. Let's move on to one that's a bit more tricky. Let's try uh, logging into our Coinbase account without our old phone. All right, so we're going to go sign in here. Uh, I've got my username and password, right? Oh, I'm just missing my phone. All right, so there we go. Now I am being asked for my two-factor authentication for my old phone, which is lost. Uh, I do not have it. I do not have a backup. What do I do? Okay, unable to submit a one-time code. There's the link. All right. I have lost my authenticator app. So I'm going to click that. All right. Now we're into Coinbase recovery. All right. So this process may take 48 to 72 hours. You're definitely going to lose uh, access to your account for this amount of time. But you can't get in anyway. So uh, you don't have any choice. All right. So we're going to hit start. All right. First, it wants my phone number. All right, so now it's going to send a code to my phone. So I'm going to need to put that code in there. All right, I'm going to click Next. All right, so we managed to get through that. <laughs> All right, now what we need to do is uh, upload our driver's license or our photo ID, whichever the case may be. All right, so I'm going to choose driver's license. And uh, I'm not too crazy about this webcam upload. It's a little uh, flaky. You have to hold up your ID to your webcam. Works may work for you. Doesn't usually work for me. So what I do is I have a flatbed scanner. I scanned in my uh, driver's license, the front side and the back side, and then cropped them down to make them into little JPEGs. I, just about anybody can do that, right? So we'll do a file upload. All right, and it wants me to drag those two uh, pictures that I've created and saved on my computer. So like I said, uh, I used my scanner and saved them as JPEG, not PDFs. Uh, yeah, so it's got to be a JPEG or a PNG, whatever uh, floats your boat. All right, so I'm just going to drop that front one here, and then I'm going to drag the one that's got the back on there. And you can just click on these and uh, navigate to the file if you want to do that. Uh, but I like to click and drag. All right, so I'm going to hit continue there. All right, now it wants to use my webcam. I'm going to allow that. All right, so I managed to get past that step. It was a little tricky. All right, so now I'm going to hit next. All right, we're going to see what they do here. Whoa. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's see. I got, an e I got an email. I got a couple of texts. 
Now I'm getting texts on my phone number. I'm assuming that when you got your new phone, you ported your phone number over, right? I'm just assuming that you've done that. So you are able to receive texts on your old phone number, whatever the phone number on record was. <laughs> All right, so let's check out that email. All right, so I got this one that said my account has been verified. Interesting. Um, oh, okay, and then I got this one. Uh, you have initiated a Coinbase account recovery. Your account is now in the process of resetting the two-factor authentication. Uh, if I requested this, no further action is required. At that point, you can use the code sent to your mobile phone number to log into your account. All right, so uh, this is what I received on my phone. Um, when you click that link, it just takes you over to let you know that you can disable your account if you want to. Uh, but I'm not going to do that because I was the one that initiated this process. All right. So uh, we can safely ignore that. <laughs> Never forget, if you're the one trying to reset your account, it's going to look like someone else is doing it. <laughs> they just want to make sure. All right, so uh, I can cancel the account recovery using this link. I don't want to do that. So basically what's going to happen is I'm going to wait uh, until they uh, disable two-factor authentication. Uh, they're going to send me an email to let me know that it's done. And at that point, I will be able to log into my account without my two-factor authentication code. Just a simple login. Once I've done that, then I can go and re-enable two-factor authentication using my new phone, right? Pretty simple. I think you guys can handle that. So that's it, right? It's a little bit of a hassle. It's a big hassle, but it's doable, right? All you got to do is go through this process of uh, identity verification, and then they will disable two-factor so that you can get yourself logged into your, into your account. All right, now I'm going to try one that's uh, maybe a little out of the ordinary. Uh, maybe not everybody has this account, but I'm just going to, it's a process that you'll be confronted with on several types of cryptocurrency exchanges. All right, so I'm going to go over here to Cobbin Hood. Ooh, I'm going to log in. All right, now it's asking for the two-factor authentication, which I don't have because I lost my phone. So I'm going to hit uh, this uh, here. Right now, it wants me to upload. Ha ha! It wants me to hand uh, a, a handwritten note. All right, and uh, I happen to have an example of one. All right, and there we go. Uh, that's me smiling and holding up my ID on a piece of paper that says "For Cobbin Hood, disable two-factor authentication only and the date." Right, that was done a while back. But that's what you need. You need a picture of yourself with a piece of paper with those exact words and information and a picture of your ID. And then you can simply drag that into this upload and hit submit. And it'll be very similar to Coinbase. What will happen is, uh, of course, the, file, the account will be disabled, but that doesn't matter because you couldn't get into it anyway without your uh, two-factor authentication device. In fact, what they'll probably, well, I think what happened to me was they sent me the email saying, hey, we, we verified you, right? And then, but it's going to take a few days for us to deactivate 2FA on your account. And then you'll get another follow up email that says, okay, now we've disabled 2FA. You can safely log into your account. And once you've done that, you'll be able to re enable using the new phone. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. There may be some other cryptocurrency accounts that have a slightly different process, but uh, this, these are the main two. Uh, upload ID, take a selfie, or uh, submit a picture of yourself with uh, some instructions on a piece of paper with your ID and the date, right? So that's it, right? That's what you have to do when you completely lost your phone. Don't forget I have a live stream every Friday night. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join me for my live Q&A, live from Michigan, where you can throw out any questions that you may have, and I'll do my best to get them answered for you right there on the fly. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell that you can click. 
that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.